Hey, 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 what do you say? Hey, it's Kevin with The Swipe It Show. And you are watching wherever you are from at and on the Success Network. And of course, I'm Kevin Hodes, and I am the president and CEO of Swipe It. And we want to help our clients the best we can. I got a ton of stuff coming in today. So if you see me grabbing the phone, trying to calm it down. But of course, uh, lots of great things going on here at Swipe It. Hey, listen, I don't want you to forget, but if you could like, maybe share, or maybe even chime in if you want to ask a question or two, we are live and we are in the office. Hey, the HQ of Swipe It. But of course, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on all of the social media platforms. But what's important for you to know is you can always reach us. And maybe we could put a little banner down there in the bottom that would say, reach us at XYZ, all that good stuff. But, uh, hey, Nadia, Nadia, good to see you. Hope you're having a good morning. Hey, I wanted to uh, show you a couple of things I, I received. A really cool thing that just showed up here. This was, uh, I was out of town. I was in New Hampshire. And uh, we we go all over the country for our certain kinds of clients that we have. You know, and it just needed that extra special touch. So I was in New Hampshire. I flew into Boston, but I just got back and here I am live on the show. But more importantly, check this out. I'm opening up the mail and, you know, I don't know if you're a fan of the BBB or not. Uh, you know, I think it's kind of cool to get your see if I could uh, show that where it's not having too many. So it's the brand new thing. And it says since 2013. You know, they were bugging me to join for many years, and I was really not really jumping on the bandwagon. But, of course, you know, when you have zero complaints to the BBB after, you know, over 20 years in business, that's pretty good, I would say. And, uh, of course, uh, even on our website, you can click through and see that we've got an A-plus rating. But I don't know if that if that's important to you. Just wanted to show you. So I've got the old one over here. Uh, you'd have to actually come into the office to see it hanging on the wall, but I literally change it out every year. But eh, I don't know. BBB, if it's important to you, zero complaints. Never had one. And you know why? Because we take care of our clients. There's no need for them to actually get all angry at us and, you know, maybe have a uh, complaint, right? Uh, but here, here's another thing I got. Uh, Last week, I don't know if you can see this. And let's see if maybe we can get it. That is Mr. Spud Webb. Yeah, famous basketball player, Spud Webb. I know Spud a little bit, and he's a pretty cool guy. But uh, maybe we should ask him. You know, this is his little bobble, bobblehead. Let's ask Spud if you should go to the BBB to check out companies. And, yeah, he says yes. I did this with him when he signed it. He actually signed it for me. I, I have uh, this one. I actually have another one of these somewhere. Yeah, I, I was at a game, so now I have two spuds, one signed, one not signed. And uh, it's kind of fun, Spud Web. So if you have a question for me and you'd like to ask, maybe we should ask Spud. He might say no, or he might say yes. Having fun here in the office, right? It's better to ask Spud. Maybe we should just, we can have a segment, like ask Spud. Or better yet, maybe we should get Spud on uh, a call with us, and he could be live in the studio with us. Or, you know, he lives here locally. I can get a hold of him. Who knows? But you know what today's topic is? We're talking about what's the number one thing that people always ask us. What is the number one thing? Well, I'm going to tell you the number one thing we're always asked is, what's your rate? What's your rate? What's your rate? You know, we get that question so often and it is extremely important to ask that question and i would be asking a very similar question too but i think that asking the rate should be done in a specific manner and i want to give you some ideas and ways to do it so that you can uh be more up to get the appropriate answer and i want you to be open to what that answer is going to be because there's a lot of factors that come into play when you ask that question. So you might have, let's say, 
an internet company. You might have a retail store. You might have a uh, hand keyed transaction. You might be doing recurring billing. You might never ever see the card. It's all over the phone. Uh, you, you know, you might send out a payment link through a product and or service. And there's so many variables that come into play with the rate structures. And then of course there is um, the SIC code of your business and the classification of that business. And then there is the actual card issuing bank with hundreds and hundreds of different types of cards out there. Well, that will place a factor in there too. Uh, the trip that I just had to New Hampshire, I paid with one of my cards that I have so many points that the hotel was free, the airfare was free, the rental car was free. So I'm flying all over the place, but I never pay for anything. Why is that? Well, just like you, I have points and I got a lot of points and we use them for those types of things. The merchants, you, me, we pay extra monies to process those cards that give your clients the extra points for them to go out and do those things. So we, as the merchants, pay for all those things. But hopefully you have not undercut yourself that you're not covering the cost. And I'm going to suggest to you that you always figure in what your cost is, including payroll, sales tax, everything that you need to collect when you're doing, you know, maybe you have uh, energy costs. Heat just keeps going down on me here. I'm a short dude, but I don't want to be any shorter on camera. But, you know, listen, let's take the product that you're selling. You you have to accompany put in shipping costs, everything associated with running your business. It could be payroll, sales tax, energy bills, staffing, you know, uh, I don't know, your rent. You, you don't actually sell the cost. You don't sell the product and then go back to the client and go, hey, you've got to now pay me for my payroll and all these operating overhead expenses. You need to put that into it when you classify. If, you, if you're selling a $10 widget, I hope that $10 widget is everything associated and you have your markup and your profit and everything in it. You would never, I don't think it's, I, I'm not a fan of going to the client and saying, hey, if you're going to pay with your credit card, um, we're going to have to charge you a little bit more. I, you know, I, I think that's a negative connotation to it. And there are people out there and we have these programs too where you can actually add on the fee where it says, hey, if you pay with a credit card, there's an additional 3%, 2%, 5%, whatever it may be, because the merchant kind of signifies they have different programs and levels. But I I just am not a fan of it. And if somebody would say, hey, listen, you pay by credit card, we'll do this. What I'm going to suggest to you is that you say to the customer that will give you a discount for cash. And if they say no, then take the payment. Because you've already qualified that process and said, okay, I've got all these things, payroll, sales tax, electricity, rent, whatever it may be, mortgage, I don't know, all built into the cost of that item. When you go to Walmart, you go to Target, you go to Best Buy, you go to any retailer, you know, these big boys, they're surely not doing it. And they're surely not wanting to pass along that cost where we could go okay there was a point and that might come back i'm going to bring this up where shipping costs have gone through the roof and there's like a shipping fee i think that instead of adding a shipping fee they should just raise their prices you know i hate to see that but i think these shipping companies are going to do that here shortly because the price of gas is going up so much so uh not not a pretty situation on uh, gas expenses and what we might see in shipping costs. I hope they don't do it again. But I want to go into what the rates are. And you, the merchant, want to know what those are. And what's really cool about what we do is I'm going to share my screen here. And that screen that I'm going to uh, share with you, you're going to see our website. And our website is right here and what's cool about our website there there i am on the right hand side and the 
Mr. Michael Goldsmith is on the left, and there's Ernest. Ernest makes unbelievable barbecue. If you're in the DFW area, you might want to check that out. But we we have this website here as a resource for you to find out information. And I, obviously, you can see that we, you know, you can win with swipe it. You know, you we offer free credit card machines. Uh, you can try us for 90 days. We, yeah, we do next day funding. We've got great service and uh, great rates. There we go. Look at that. Rates. That's what we're talking about today, right? Well, you know what? Here's the cool thing about the rates. I'm going to show you where you can go and you actually see what the interchange rates are. Because when you click on the facts section, it's going to bring you to these Visa and MasterCard rates, little buttons. And we want you to know that those will go directly to the site where you can actually see and i'm going to stop sharing and reshare the screen so that we can look at those rates and now we are on to those rates there you go now you can see that so if you had gone to the website and clicked through this is mastercard's interchange rates and they they effectively change these rates every april and october and while you're looking at this, you're going to see that it says April 16th. So we've got uh, another 60 days or so, 30 days before they change that. And who knows? What, what will they do? They might raise or, or lower them. Here's the thing about the interchange rates. This is the cost that the card issuer has identified as what they have built in for the cost to do those transactions, just like you, the retailer, would be trying to figure out a way to actually do those costs, right, for your selling of your product. Well, if you were an airline, here you go, here's the top one. If you were an airline and you accepted a core enhanced, a world or world high or a world elite card, MasterCard, this is the rate. This is it. If you were a charity and you accepted one of these cards, this is what it is. If you keyed entered a transaction, this is what the rate would be. So when somebody says, what's your rate, what's your rate, what's your rate? Well, are you an airline? Are you a charity? Are you a convenience store, convenience stuff? Are you hand keying them? Are you a Lodina and auto rental? Are you a Merit One, Merit One insurance, a Merit One real estate? Are you a Merit Three base? Are you a Merit One, Two, or Three passenger transport? Uh, you know, and, and this goes on and on. Are you a petroleum company, you know, or, or you're a restaurant? So if you're a restaurant and you took a MasterCard World Elite card, it's 1.73, 2.2. Are you a service industry? Are you a supermarket? You know, you might do a, a, a travel and entertainment large ticket. Well, maybe you're uh, General Electric and you're an electricity company, right? This is what they pay. I don't control this. They do. And with them controlling all of the costs to process a credit card, we just need to pass on those costs directly to you. So I always tell everybody, you want to be on interchange. And so this is the same thing that Walmart, Best Buy, Radio Shack, when they were in business, that this is what they paid, right? So there's consumer debit prepaid rates. I mean, it's pages here. How many pages? It's 10 pages long. You don't have to worry about all of this stuff. That's the, the amazing thing. You don't have to worry about it. When we set up a merchant account, we will code your business by the SIC code. We will put in all the, ne the necessary information to make sure you qualify for the best rate structures. Well, what if you were actually working with somebody that, signed you up and didn't put in the correct information and you were a airline business and they chair they they set you up as a charity well maybe the card that you're taking isn't going through for some reason because well those individuals have set you up incorrectly let's take a look at the interchange rate structures for visa this is from uh, october and when you scroll down scroll down so you can see this is, well, where is it? Obviously, you got to go to a couple of different pages. to tell you. Okay, here we go. So their programs and the way they work is if you were, this is the debit card. So like you've got a debit card, I'm sure. It's roughly 40 
to 50% of all transactions done. And this is the interchange reimbursement fees for um, debit cards. And debit cards run a little different because debit cards and the way they work is that, you know, back in the early 2000s, uh, let's just, well, how many years ago? 10, 12 years ago, there was the Frank Dodd Durbin Amendment and the government got into credit card processing. And what they did was they capped what the card issuers could charge for debit cards. And so here, that's why you're seeing this at 0.05%. This is why we don't recommend using Square or you know these companies that do all of these type of transactions that are, uh, they sell you on a bundled rate. So Square's like at 2.75 or 2.85 or whatever they're charging. I mean, look at this right here. If you took a debit card and it hit the network at 2.75%, you can see that, at least with Square, you can see that 0 0.05 is a much better number to be paying, right? It's a math question. So is Square good for you if it's a debit card transaction? I don't think so. What would you rather pay, 2.75% or 0.05%? So these are things that are so, so important when it comes to you and your business. So this debit card program, the interchange rates for that, as you can see, there's pages, there's 23 pages here. So you can go through it, you can click on it, you can see it on my website and see maybe you were a government entity doing a prepaid card transaction and it, it wasn't a qualifying debit card. So here's the thing, this is regulated. Regulated is when the government said, hey, banking institutions that if you have $12 billion or more in assets, they're going to charge this column. If you were exempt, then maybe you were using a smaller credit union or a smaller bank that didn't have $12 billion or more. Well, these are those rates. Again, let's say it was a, these are prepaid cards. Let's go to something that is not prepaid. So let's say you were a uh, restaurant and, or a hotel. Let's say you're a hotel, right? So these are hotel, car rental, debit card, e-commerce transactions. Obviously, if it's regulated with a banking institution that has $12 billion or more in assets, it's going to be the 0 0.05. But if it's unregulated credit union, smaller institutions with less than $12 billion, well, it hits the network at 1.7. Both of these columns are still less than Square and all these other Stripe and all these companies that have bundled rates. You know, a, a hand keyed transaction with Square is more than 2.75%. I mean, that's just for one card types. So, you know, here's the, those are uh, very interesting things that people don't think about a lot. And, and I want to go to the, the actual Visa. And here you go. So now you have the Interlink. If you were a supermarket, point, you know, it's 0 0.05 on regulated retail transactions, 0 0.80. Again, this is a whole other schedules. There's so many of these things that you can just go wonderfully to uh, our website. The visa rates, you click on these and they'll bring you right over to exactly where I just showed you. But, you know, we are wanting to make sure that people understand that we want people to know where their rates are. Here you have on my little facts section right below where the interchange stuff is, is a question. And it says, what is interchange? Interchange is the flow of information and funds between banks that issue credit cards and banks or service providers that process card transactions for merchants through the associations of data processing networks. This is a very complicated scenario of how all of these transactions take place. And if you're working with an organization that is giving you an interchange rate structure, and yeah, of course, now you're going, well, how do you make money at Swipe It? Well, we're going to mark that up a little bit so that we can make a profit. Just like you, the retailer, are going to mark up that widget you're selling. Are we going to be at a 40% margin? margin? Heck no. We couldn't afford to be there. That would be a lot more money. We're talking pennies, nickels, and dimes. We want to have you being the most profitable that you can be. We want you to make as much money as you can make. 
But, you know, hey, Wally, good to see you. Of course, uh, we, we've got a bunch of people watching, listening, and hopefully you're able to enjoy what I've just shown you about interchange rates. People don't actually get a chance to understand how the complexity of the interchange rate structures work and the complexities of what is actually taking place on a card transaction. On a previous show, we talked about how a transaction takes place. You, the customer, give the card to the retailer. The retailer swipes, chips, or taps that card. That information goes to the processor. The processor contacts the card issuer. The card issuer then says, hey, you're approved or you're declined. And then it sends that information back to the processor. It sends it back to you, the merchant. And then you're able to sell the product to the customer. If that card declined, we've spoken about this in the past, you want to make sure that you ask for a different card. There isn't going to be material, you know, it's not just going to, you know, magically have funds in that bank account. They're going to have to move funds over and retry a transaction. But, you know, at the end of the day, if it was a bank card and it hit the network and it was a banking institution that had $12 billion or more in assets, it's going to hit the regulated column of 0.05%. If it's an unregulated card, it's going to be in the low twos, less than or more than. Well, it's going to be like 1% to 2%. So, you know, depending again on the SIC code, the actual transaction type that you're doing, whether it was hand keyed, it was a, you know, in person, it was over the phone, it was recurring billing, it was now you're you're doing a transaction and you're not hand keying in the information if, if you hand keyed a transaction and you didn't put in the address and the zip code so do you see there's so many factors that come into play so when somebody says to me what's your rate what do you think i ask them i immediately say what is your rate they usually will say it was what they were told in the beginning when they signed up with someone maybe three five seven years ago and they're just remembering that's what it is. But because of the intense amount of transactions that take place with the different card issuers and the card types, the rewards, and all the products and our services that give rewards back to the consumers, you and I, there's way too many factors for me to go, it is 1%, 2%, 3%. So when you ask me, what's your rate? You're going to get a different answer than you've ever heard before. And I want to be upfront about how the process process works. So now, I believe that knowledge is power. And when you work with Swipe It, you're going to get knowledge that you have never heard before. You're going to get the real answers of what things and how they work. If you want to work with a company that is giving you the knowledge to make real decisions to work with companies that know what they're doing, and there's a very small percentage of us that will do what we're doing in this manner. Uh, you know, I suggest that you go to your current company's website, see if they have the same stuff that we put on our website where we show the interchange rates. I'll bet you 25 bucks. You want to take me up on that? Check it out. I guarantee they're not going to have it there. And if they do, they're not going to be able to explain it to you exactly what I explained it to you with all the different phenomenal things that you have to do to classify it. Now, I have had people go, well, what if I don't take debit cards and I tell them or I don't take regular credit cards and I tell the consumer that they have to pay me with a, a debit card? Well, I don't really suggest that. Just make sure that you are calculating the correct amount for your business. So if you're a retail storefront, I would always, you know, I just figured 3% to cover the cost because, you know, if you're in three, three and a half percent, you know, you could be more in the corporate business side and the more corporate business client that you have, the more you're going to pay on the high end for credit card processing fees. The one thing I didn't tell you or show you, and I think it is already off, but the, the highest card on interchange to accept at the present moment on all of these schedules is 3.25%. And that happens to be a card that I think I might have it on me. Let's see what we got. 
can't show you my credit card number, but let's let me give you an example of an actual card. Yeah, I do have it because I was traveling yesterday. And what do you think I do is I like to get points. Yes, there it is. Bam. There's the American airline. And it is, as I've stated, a world elite card. Worst card a retailer can ever accept. But because I fly so much, I get free stuff. So if you're taking this exact card, you're paying the most for that card. And you can't tell the customer that they can't or you can't tell them, you, hey, I don't want to take that card because I know it's the most expensive. So I hope you enjoyed today's show all about what is the rate that we offer. It's going to be Interchange Plus, and we're going to give you the best qualifying situation to make sure systems are in place so you get every single qualifying best rate. We're going to teach you how to get that very best qualifying rate on all those schedules. But we are a professional organization with your profitability in mind. And, of course, with all the volume that we have from California to New York to Florida to Southern California, and Seattle and wherever, I don't care where you're at. We want to be your merchant service provider. We want to be your resource. We want to give you the information that you need to know to make the right decisions. This is Kevin Hodes. I am with Swipe It. And of course, it is the Swipe It show. And we always want to be your resource for everything in credit card processing. Maybe you want to do ACHing too. We do that. ATMs, we can probably get you a resource for ATM. I mean, we've got... Anything related to credit card processing and credit cards themselves. But don't forget to like it. You know, click that little button down there for liking and sharing if you want to share this video to somebody. But we appreciate you. Good morning, Kathy. And uh, remember, always work with a professional. Google whoever it is that you're working with to find out if they actually have, you know, the uh, wax like this. You know, no complaints from the BBB. But uh, we appreciate everything you do. And don't forget, is working with Swipe It a good thing? Spud says yes. Hey, appreciate you guys. Have a great week, great month. We'll talk to you next month. And, of course, remember to do what you want when you want. Don't get locked into another merchant service provider. And we'll be here to help you when you need us. This is Kevin with Swipe It on the Success Network. Thank you so much and have a great time.